And welcome back. You know, for most of us, going to work is a matter of driving to the office, parking, and going inside. But when your office is an aircraft carrier at sea, coming and going is, you know, a little bit more complicated. So think about it. Your parking lot is basically a wave-tossed flight deck. Chris 6 News reporter Jane Caffrey gave it a shot when she boarded USS Harry S. Truman last week. Jane, how was the commute? Well, Stephanie, a photojournalist Mike Salazar and I were flying in a plane at about 200 miles per hour when it came to a dead stop in just seconds as soon as we hit the supercarrier's flight deck. It will wake you up, that's certainly for sure. But before we made this landing, we gave it a try in a flight simulator that also gave us a glimpse into the future of naval aviation. Getting aboard an aircraft carrier can be quite a commute. Traffic can be hectic, but parking is the real challenge. That speck in the water is the pilot's target for landing. There is no room for air. It is pretty small down there. I got in the cockpit to give it a try. Control your up, down, left, right. There's a whole bunch of other buttons. Brushing up on my top gun skills in this F-35 flight simulator. Pull back on the stick a little bit. And training with pilot Graham Cleveland, call sign boss. The ship is traveling. The runway is constantly moving away and to the right. He's trained for 300 hours in the F-35, the most cutting-edge fighter jet in the Navy's combat fleet. The technology is, is far and away better than anything else we have. This combat jet is dubbed the world's most expensive weapon. It brings fifth-generation technology to the Navy fleet. Its astronomical cost, $94 million a piece, makes the F-35 one of the most controversial weapon systems in U.S. history. But it's also considered a cornerstone of U.S. defense. I'll let the decision makers decide whether that, uh, that is worth that specific cost. Uh, but at the same time, it's, it's certainly something that we absolutely need if we want to stay ahead of the threat. It really is the, the, the way of the future. But can I handle the jet's futuristic technology? After splashing a few bogeys in the simulator, it was time to land on an aircraft carrier. We're coming in hot. Just a little bit up. Oh! Uh. Did we land? Yeah, you did. All right. I mean, I don't do know that like they're going to let you do it again, though. I'm not sure. But I wanted a shot at the real thing. So my wingman, photographer Mike Salazar, and I put on our vests and helmets and boarded this plane called the Cod. It's how people in cargo get on and off aircraft carriers at sea. We strapped in tight, and after a two-hour flight from Virginia to the coast of Florida, we made our landing on a super carrier. Here we go, here we go, here we go. That's what it looks like when you go from hundreds of miles an hour to zero in just seconds. And so a little wobbly, okay, we say goodbye to simulators and civilian life and prepare for 24 hours aboard one of the world's most powerful nuclear super carriers. Tomorrow, we join the Navy for 24 hours, getting rare access to that aircraft carrier underway at sea. We get in the action in the middle of the flight deck as jets land and take off all around us. And we eat in the mess halls, do chores with other crew members, and get a full feel for a day in the life of a U.S. Navy sailor. Jane Caffrey, Chris 6 News. Lee. All right, thank you very much, Jane. Well, this is